Here's an interesting observation. Take a look at this. As you expect, under SN1 conditions, substitution would occur by making this carbocation, but this reaction doesn't happen, and you can easily tell me why. That's a primary alkyl chloride substrate, and so that's a primary carbocation, and those guys don't form. This does happen, and we can call this primary. Hmm. Here's another example, same kind of thing. It's a tertiary alkyl chloride, SN1, chlorine leaves, carbocation is formed. This works. I'm not real surprised, it's tertiary. Well, what do you make of this data? Almost the same structure. Now we've got that double bond in there again. This is about 120 times faster. So what we're saying is if we look at these pairs, n-propyl chloride, compared to the compound that has the same number of carbons but a double bond here, that carbon-carbon double bond is attached to the carbon that has chlorine on it. This clearly is faster because it happens and this one doesn't. And when we pick one where we have an alkyl chloride that we can measure the rate because it does happen, and then we look at an alkyl chloride that has this carbon-carbon double bond attached to it, it's much faster. In both cases, we conclude that this guy's faster because there's a double bond attached directly to that carbon. Let me emphasize that. There's a carbon there, and there's a carbon there, and in this case, there's a double bond attached directly to that carbon. In this case, there's a double bond attached directly to that carbon. That's the carbon that has chlorine on it. And in those two cases, those are especially fast. There's a simple explanation. We have an alkyl chloride and we're forming the carbocation. So I'm going to write carbon Cl R, some alkyl group. And here we have R, C, plus. But if we start with this R being a vinyl group, that's what we call this carbon-carbon double bond. So we have a vinyl group attached to that carbon with a positive charge. The activation energy to form this ion is less. And the Hammond postulate helps us understand that, and we're going to say that this intermediate is more stable, therefore the transition state leading to it is more stable because the transition state looks a fair amount like products. So we have a lower activation energy. When we have a carbon-carbon double bond, it's something you're familiar with already. This compound has a second resonance structure, as does this compound. We can picture this pair of electrons swinging over be shared between th these two carbons. It's still shared with the middle carbon, but now it's the other end. We can picture this pair of electrons swinging over in the same way. So the double bond moves over one position. There's our second resonance structure. There's our second resonance structure. And we know that when we can write more than one resonance structure, neither one really represents the way the ion is. It's a hybrid of both. And that's why this energy is lower for the intermediate carbocation. It has two resonance structures. And when we have more than one resonance structure, the charge is spread out over more carbons. And so it's more stabilized. So we're making a resonance stabilized intermediate carbocation in the SN1 reaction in the cases where there's a double bond attached directly to the carbon that has the leaving group. In only those cases. Now look at one more thing that's really important about this. While neither of these structures represents the exact structure of the actual carbocation, they are telling us that there is positive charge on this carbon and on this carbon. So when products form with the nucleophile adding, we can see nucleophile adding to this carbon because it has partial positive charge, or adding to this carbon because it has partial positive charge. So we have the potential for two different products forming from this resonance stabilized carbocation. Now in this particular case, if we're talking about this exact structure, these two are identical. 
The nucleophile reacts at both carbons, but it forms the same product. But take a look at this one. When the nucleophile adds with this carbocation, it can add here or there as our electrons, sharing where there's positive charge here, or sharing where there's positive charge here. And these are different products. They're very different products. This is a nucleophile attached to a primary position. This is a nucleophile attached to a tertiary position. And we'll get mixtures. We'll get both of these. Will we get an equal mixture? Not really. The nucleophile is going to prefer to add to one or the other. And typically, the nucleophile will add to the one where the positive charge is more stable. So there's more positive charge on this carbon than this carbon. The nucleophile is attracted here more than here. But just say typically there'd be more of the tertiary and less of the primary. The point is that we'll get two products. They're really different. They're likely to be formed in different ratios. And that's because we have a resonance stabilized carbocation. So there's two special things when we have a resonance stabilized carbocation. One, it's formed faster. So the SN run reaction happens faster. And two, it leads to two products, the nucleophile adding to each carbon where there's positive charge. Are there other types of structures where this shows up? You bet. Take a look at this cyclic structure. An SN1 with this compound, leaving group leaves, we make a carbocation, positive charge here. This is an example where we have a positive charge on a carbon that has a double bond attached to it. So we'll see resonance-stabilized carbocation. As these pi electrons slide over to make the second resonance structure, and we'll have positive charge on two different carbons. Notice, like in the other case, those carbons that have the positive charge are separated by a carbon that never has the positive charge. This carbon is never positively charged. It's always part of the double bond. So when a nucleophile reacts with this, nucleophile may add at this carbon or at this carbon. And here it comes, and here it comes, which forms distinctly different products. One that's not rearranged, the nucleophile has added where the chlorine was, and a second one that has undergone rearrangement. The nucleophile came in at a carbon removed from where the chlorine was attached. So Resonance stabilized carbocations give rise, rise to rearranged products as well as products that don't show rearrangement, typically in unequal amounts, through reaction rates that occur substantially faster than if the double bond weren't there.